guys, it's Miss Elise with the Cobb County Library System, and today we're going to read When Pigasso Met Mootis by Nina Layden. There once was a young pig named Pigasso. While the other piglets rolled in the mud and played games, Pigasso painted. He painted anything and everything in a most unusual way. At the same time, there was a young bull named Mutis. Mutis was not like other bulls. He wasn't interested in bullfights. Mutis was happy only when he painted, and he painted big, bold, bright pictures. In time, word of Pigasso's talent spread through the pig provinces. Soon, art-loving pigs from all over lined up to buy his creations. At the same time, Mootis was getting famous in the cattle community. There weren't many households that didn't own a Moostrapiece. Pigasso and Mootis were becoming art superstars, but this came with a price. Everybody wanted them. Art buyers, art sellers, art students, art historians, art groupies. It was an art attack. One day, Pigasso got fed up and said, I'm tired of this noisy pig pen. At the same time, Mutis declared, I'm sick of this crowded cow town. Needing a change, they both decided to look for a peaceful place where they could paint without distractions. So each of the two artists looked for far and wide for the perfect spot. Picasso found a lovely farm looking towards the east. Mutis found a handsome farm facing the west. After Pigasso moved in, he went to introduce himself to his new neighbor across the road. At the same time, Mutis went to introduce himself to his new neighbor across the road. This is how Pigasso and Mutis and coincidentally met Mutis, and coincidentally, this is how Mutis met Pigasso. At first, Pigasso and Mutis were friendly and welcomed each other as neighbors, but soon things began to change. It started one day when Pigasso criticized one of Mutis's paintings. The Mutis made fun of one, one of Pigasso's. Mutis called Pigasso an art hog. Then Pigasso called Mutis a mad cow. Mutis quipped, you paint like a two-year-old. Pigasso retorted, you paint like a wild beast. Mutis raged, your colors look like mud. Picasso spat, your paintings look like color by numbers. Then things got really out of hand. It was a modern art mess. Pigasso stormed off into his house. Then Mutis doesn't like my art, he huff. Well, I'll show him. And Mutis bullied his way into his house. I'll give that Picasso something he can really criticize, he snorted. Then a full-scale feud erupted, but it wasn't. It was a most unusual battle. Armed with ladders and buckets of paint, Mutis launched the first attack. He started at dawn. By the end of the evening, he had succeeded in transforming the outside of his house into a monster-sized moosterpiece. Not to be outdone, Pigasso fired off his paintbrushes, and in full view of the enemy, counterattacked. He turned his farm into a huge and out outrageous pork of art. The two artists then retreated into their houses and pulled down the shades. Picasso certainly didn't want to look out his window and stare at Mutis, and Mutis had no desire to give his rooms a view of a Picasso. This presented a problem, and there seemed to be only one solution. Without a word to each other, Picasso and Mutis each began to build a huge wooden fence down the middle of the road. At first, Picasso and Mutis seemed satisfied. Both artists went back to painting by themselves, but after a while, Picasso was surprised to find that he, that he missed that bullheaded Mutis. And at the same time, Mutis found his studio empty without the presence of pig-headed Picasso. Pigasso pondered, that Mutis isn't such a bad artist. He has some interesting ideas. And Mutis moaned, that Picasso may not paint like me, but he knows what he's doing. However, being naturally pig-headed, 
and bullheaded. Neither artist knew how to apologize to the other, so they did what they did. They do best. They let their paint brushes do the talking. Pegaso painted on one side of the fence, and Mutis painted on the other. Each worked night and day, and were exhausted. It was strangely quiet when they were done. Then, curious to see what Mutis had been doing, Pegaso sprinted around to the other side. At the same time, Mutis galloped over to Pegaso's side. The silence was broken as the two artists began laughing at their amazing work of art. From that day on, Pegaso and Mutis became great friends. They happily took down the fence and shared their different views. A few months later, a big museum bought the fence. Pegaso called his side when Pegaso met Mutis, and Mutis called his side when Mutis met Pegaso. The critics called it incredible. The end. See you guys again later.